The Mysterious Tadpole, written and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Read these pictures because they tell part of the story. Greetings, nephew, cried Lewis's uncle McAllister. I've brought a wee bit of Scotland for your birthday. Thanks, said Lewis. Look, Mom and Dad, it's a tadpole. Lewis named him Alphonse and promised to take good care of him. Lewis took Alphonse to school for show and tell. Class, here we have a splendid example of a tadpole, exclaimed Miss Shelbert. Let's ask Lewis to bring it back every week so we can watch it become a frog. Miss Shelbert was amazed to see how quickly Alphonse grew. Maybe it's because he eats only cheeseburgers, said Lewis. When Alphonse became too big for his jar, Lewis moved him to the kitchen sink. He is the perfect pet, said Lewis. <clears throat> Lewis and Alphonse love to play games. Be careful, Lewis, his mother said. The living room is not a soccer field. Something is going to get broken. And she was right. That very same day, the soccer ball slammed into Aunt Tabitha's antique lamp. This tadpole is out of control, said Lewis's mother. Something must be done. It won't happen again, promised Lewis. I promise. I'll take Alphonse to obedience school. Well, the only animals at the obedience school were dogs. Some of their owners stared at Alphonse suspiciously. Pretend you're a dog, whispered Lewis. Alphonse tried to bark, but it sounded like a burp. Hold on a minute, said the trainer. What kind of dog is this? He's a hairless spotted water spaniel from Scotland, explained Lewis. Alphonse quickly learned to sit, stay, and retrieve. He graduated at the top of his class. My parents will be very pleased, said Lewis. But Lewis's parents were not pleased when Alphonse outgrew the sink and had to be moved to the bathtub. This shower is way too crowded, complained Lewis's father. This bathroom is a mess, moaned Lewis's mother. And then at last, Lewis's classmates enjoyed Alphonse, who was still making weekly visits. Wow, oh wow, show and tell is more fun than recess nowadays, they all yelled. But one day, Miss Shelbert decided that Alphonse was not turning into an ordinary frog. She asked Lewis to stop bringing him to school. Well, by the time summer vacation arrived, Alphonse had outgrown the bathtub, too. We could buy the parking lot next door and build him a swimming pool, suggested Lewis. Oh, be sensible, declared parent Lewis's parents. Swimming pools are expensive. We are sorry, Lewis, but this situation has become impossible. Tomorrow, you will have to take your tadpole to the zoo. I can't put my friend in a cage, cried Lewis. Well, that night, Lewis was very sad until he, re until he remembered that the gym in the nearby high school had a swimming pool. Lewis and Alphonse, Lewis hid Alphonse under a carpet and smuggled him inside. Nobody uses this place during the summer, whispered Lewis. You will be safe here. After making sure that Alphonse felt safe and at, at home, Lewis said goodbye. I'll be back tomorrow with a big pile of cheeseburgers, he promised. Lewis came every afternoon to play with Alphonse. In the mornings, he earned the money for the cheeseburgers by delivering newspapers. The training continued as well. Lewis would say, Alphonse, retrieve! And... Alphonse would succeed every single time. As summer vacation passed, Lewis became more and more worried about what would happen to Alphonse when the high school kids returned. After his first day of classes, Lewis ran right to the high school and found the gym was bustling with activity. The swim team was headed for the pool. Stop, cried Lewis. On your mark, bellowed the coach. Get set. Oh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir, said Lewis. 
go, roared the coach. Alphonse rose to the surface to welcome the swimmers. It's a submarine from another planet, shrieked the, co shrieked the coach. Call the police, get the Navy. No, 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 it's a tadpole, said Lewis. He's my pet. The coach was upset and confused. You have until tomorrow, he cried, to get that creature out of my pool. Lewis telephoned his friend, Mrs. Seavers, the librarian, and asked her for help. I'll be right there, she said. Mrs. Seavers rushed to meet Lewis at the high school. When she saw Alphonse, she was startled, so startled that she dropped her purse into the water. Retrieve, said Lewis, and Alphonse did. Where did this astounding animal come from, cried Mrs. Seavers. He was a birthday present from my uncle, Lewis replied, from Scotland. Miss Seavers telephoned Uncle McAllister. Oh, that wee little tadpole, he said. Why, he came from a lake nearby. It's the one that folks call the Loch Ness. Brace yourself, Lewis, Miss Seavers said. I believe that your uncle has found the Loch Ness monster. I don't care, cried Lewis. Alphonse is my friend and I love him. He pleaded with Miss Seavers to help him raise enough money to buy the parking lot so that he could buy a big swimming pool for Alphonse. Suddenly, Miss Seavers had a great idea. You know, long ago, a pirate ship sang right here in this very harbor, she said. No one has ever been able to find the treasure or the ship. Perhaps we can. So, the next morning, they drove to the harbor and rented a boat. This is a treasure chest, cried Lewis. Go and retrieve. So, Alfonso disappeared right under the water. Down, down, down he went. And guess what? He returned with the chest. And it was filled with gold and jewels. Let's buy that parking lot and let's get to work, cried Miss Seavers. Lewis's parents were shocked to see a construction crew in the parking lot. Lewis, they cried, what in the world is going on here? Alphonse found a pirate's treasure ship, explained Lewis, and we used part of our gold to buy you this present. Lewis's parents were shocked once again. Tickets for a vacation cruise to Hawaii? They gasped. And, said Lewis, you don't even have to worry about us because Granny has agreed to babysit. They hugged Lewis. They kissed Alphonse. How soon can we leave, they cried. Immediately, said Lewis. So by the time Lewis's parents returned, the swimming pool was being enjoyed by everyone in the city. And oh, what fun it was. A week later, Lewis said, Alphonse, tomorrow is my birthday, which means that you've been my best friend for one whole year. And then the next day, Uncle McAllister arrived from Scotland. He arrived for the party. Greetings, greetings, Lewis, my lad, he exclaimed. I've come with curious stone from the hills of Scotland. Happy birthday to you. Oh, wow. Thanks, said Lewis. But suddenly, that stone began to tremble. It began to crack. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Here we go again. The end.